All right, so we're going to talk about uh, tibial pilon and uh, malleolar fractures this week. So uh, we'll go through some slides here. Uh, I want you to understand at least some of the typical fracture patterns, the uh, reduction sequence and techniques, some surgical approaches, fixation options, and of course we'll go through some cases and questions in trauma conference. So. One way to think about uh, these injuries, uh, as shown in these slides, is to think about, uh, is to kind of look at the fibula. And uh, is the fibula intact? Is a tension failure? Is there a compression failure? So it's an interesting way to think about it. And if you look at it, I mean, here's several cases where you can see, you know, there's a, there's a tension failure of the fibula, right? So you sort of have a uh, transverse, uh, short oblique uh, injury of the uh, uh, fibula shown in all these cases and you sort of have this uh, shearing injury of the uh, tibia plafond in many cases okay sort of this like long sort of uh, you know big vertical type fracture on this side okay so that's one way to think about it it's also compression failure so here you can see if there is a medial injury right it's not that big vertical fracture it's kind of more like this right and um, uh, the fibula is much more comminuted right um, so I think all these are good examples of that here again you see on the medial side fractures like you know it's not that vertical fracture like this it's more of a you know horizontal or short oblique so compression failure of the fibula in this mechanism and then you can have the intact fibula Right now, with bimalfractures, trimalfractures, the fibula is always involved. But you know, those are rotational injuries, right? Pilon fractures are typically uh, some type of um, axial loading type injury. Okay, now it can be axial loading and plantar flexion, in which the the um, talus goes out the back of the tibia, and it could be. Uh, axial loading and dorsiflexion, in which case the uh, talus wants to go out anteriorly on the anterior plafond. Um, so here you can see examples of uh, the fibula being intact. Okay. Um, now, why would you have to be aware? Well, I think if you if you look at this, I think to the inexperienced eye, you can recognize that uh, you sort of have, you know, it looks like the joint surface doesn't look so bad there, right? If you look at that, it looks like a mortise. The problem is, this limb here, that's that's not articulating with the fibula. The fibula is all the way down there. So this is dramatically shortened. Now this fragment here, you need to keep close, a sort of close eye on in these fracture patterns, right? This fragment is the, um, you know, the chaput fragment or the anterolateral fragment. Now this is typically tethered by the anterior inferior tib-fib ligaments, right? Over here. So this fragment frequently is a bit of a constant fragment, all right? Here it is again here, right? So you can see there's that fragment. Um, here it's down here, okay? Now maybe it's a little bit rotated out of position in this one. But anyhow, the, 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 this is dramatically shortened. And again, the inexperienced eye might look at this here and sort of say, well, I see a mortise. No, I mean, this, this part, of the part of the plafond needs to come pretty much like down to here, right? It has to come and, and, and has to articulate back to at this level, right, where that uh, chaput fragment is, all right? So, you know, don't, uh, don't miss that and under-recognize the amount of depression that you can get. So here's sort of the major fragments, and you may have all kinds of varieties, but it, they often fall into a pattern, something sort of like this. Why? Well, because there's there are ligament attachments that can sort of uh, create these, right? So you have, you know, the posterior inferior tib fib ligaments here. You have the anterior inferior tib fib ligaments here. So you have your sort of chaput fragment and your Volkmann fragment of the posterior mal, and then you have your medial fragment. Now you could get also impaction in the in the corners of these injuries as well, right? And you get this typical Y, and these are the areas where you can get this sort of impaction and comminution and, you know, make things even more messy than they already are. Now, you should be aware of stage protocol because I think most centers that you'll hear about or talk to people or 
probably work at. We'll, we'll use this. I mean, that's kind of what we follow. Uh, back in 99, there were uh, two papers that looked at this, one by Patterson and Cole, and um, the other by uh, Circuit and Sanders. This is, uh, this is an error here, right? So this is, they were both in the same uh, issue of the uh, Journal of Orthopedic Trauma, but uh, two papers back to back that basically showed that a stage protocol was potentially safer, right? So it used to be that we would um, more frequently, more surgeons were operating on these acutely and running into, you know, in the early 80s, uh, a lot of soft tissue problems. Uh, complications uh, and some really bad complications from early management of pilon fractures uh, that uh, was popularized um, by the AO. Interestingly, I mean, if you go back and look, there, I mean, there's definitely AO textbooks. Um, I have one that was originally written in Germany and uh, uh, by an AO professor that uh, clearly advocated for, you know, delaying care and uh, staged management with initial uh, uh, you know, skeletal traction, for instance, with the calcaneal pin until the swelling went down. But nevertheless, somehow it got popular to operate on these acutely, got a lot of complications. So just to put things in perspective where this staged management came from, these are the uh, papers where, uh, especially the Sanders paper, that uh, kind of get uh, the credit for uh, moving most people towards doing staged management. Okay, which is, again, I didn't even see what it is, X-fix across the articular surface, so spanning X-fix of the ankle, waiting for the swelling blistering to go down, and then going back to do ORIF. So this is something very similar to what you may see us do. It's like an A-type frame, right, across the, uh, across the ankle joint. All right, so... Um, I think I may pause there and then we'll go over the uh, fixation strategies and uh, surgical approaches in the uh, uh, next part of this talk. Okay? Thanks.